welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick video on lead code problem 298, binary tree longest consecutive sequence. Given the root of a binary tree, return the length of the longest consecutive sequence path. The path refers to any sequence of nodes from some starting node to any node in the tree along the parent-child connections. The longest consecutive path needs to be from parent to child and cannot be the reverse. So let's look at an example. Here in this example, we can see that 3, 4, 5 is the longest chain. So let's look at some other chains. We have 1 to 3, which doesn't work, right? Because these are not consecutive. There should be a 2 in between these, so that doesn't work. Now, the reason that we can't have a chain from 3 to 2 is because we need to be increasing, right? We can't be decreasing. So that's why 3 to 2 is not a valid candidate. So we can see that our solution here is going to be starting at this node 3. It's going to be going to 4 because obviously there's a difference of 1 between them. So we can add 1 to get to 4. And then from 4 we can add 1 to get to 5. So obviously there's 3 nodes in this chain. Therefore we would return 3 as our final answer. Let's look at this example. So we would start at 2 and the next node is 3. So obviously that's a consecutive one. So that would be a chain. And then from 3, we go to 2. But obviously, we can only be increasing here. So this wouldn't work, despite, you know, technically these are one apart. Um, because we're decreasing, it doesn't work that way. Nor can we say 3, 2, 1 if we just started at 3. It has to be increasing. We can choose whatever node we want to be the parent node, but it has to be an increasing chain. So for this one, the longest chain is actually 2 to 3. So the way that we're going to do this is really simple. This problem isn't that bad. What we want to do is basically we want to do a top down depth first search through our um, tree here. And what we're going to do as we go through our tree is we're going to maintain the parent value, the parent value. Oops, that's terribly written parent value and the length of our longest chain that we have so far that we've built so far. Right. So it'll be like current length. And what we're going to do is when we get to a node, we're going to check is our nodes value minus the previous value of our parent? Is it one? If it is, then we know that we have a consecutive chain and therefore we can add one to our current length. And then we want to compare our current length with the maximum length that we found. And we're going to go down and try to build it. So for example, if we do this really quickly, obviously when we start here, there is no previous value. So, you know, we can just set it to whatever we want. We can do like minus infinity, right? As our previous and the length of our chain starting here would be, you know, one, right? So then we get here. So we call the DFS here. So we go to three. Obviously, the difference between one and three is not one. It's two. So that way, this isn't a chain. So now from three, we can DFS into its left and right children. And you know the, the length of the chain is one because we would assuming that we're starting here and obviously the parent is three. So then we go to the two and we see the difference between two and three is negative one. So this doesn't work. <clears throat> then we go to three and four and the difference is one because four minus three is one. Therefore, we have a, a viable chain here so we can increment our chain count. So now it becomes two. We can update our global maximum to be two. Uh, you know, the base case is just one where it's just literally the root node. Um, so our, you know, longest chain is now two. Then we go to the five and we see that the difference between five and four is one. Therefore, we have another one. So we can update our chain three and then update our global maximum, which is now three. Obviously here, there's no children. So our DFS ends and we end up bubbling up the recursion until we get back to the root node, uh, in which case our recursion is done. And all we would have to do is return three. So that's enough blabbing. Let's go to the code editor where we'll type this up. And it's really simple, just a simple DFS here. So I'll see you in the code editor. We're back in the editor. Let's write the code. Now let's handle the base case, which is we're actually given a, an empty node. Obviously, if we're given an empty node as our root, then there's no sequence we can build. We just need to return zero. So let's handle that base case. So we'll say if not root, all we need to do is return zero. There's nothing we can do. So we're going to basically set up a variable to keep track of our global uh, longest path. So we're going to say self.longestPath. 
it's just going to be equal to one because that is just the case that one node is the longest chain that we can build so obviously the the longest path is one now what we want to do is we want to call our dfs function on the on the root basically so we're going to say self.dfs uh, and remember we're going to be passing in the node that we're currently at we need to take the parent value so we're going to say root.val minus one and the reason that we want to do minus one is because we're actually going to evaluate this first node as if it were you know part of the chain and the reason that we do minus one is you know say it's one then obviously that would make a chain of one so it's basically just to handle that edge case um, with the root if you don't believe me that this works remove the minus one submit your same answer and you'll see that it doesn't work so and obviously the length of our longest chain is zero because we haven't formed a chain yet which is why we're basically you know gonna do this at the first node um, so we have that and at the end all we need to do is just return self dot longest path cool so that's the easy part now let's actually code up the DFS so def DFS and remember that here we're going to be taking the current node we're going to be taking the previous value and we're gonna be taking in the current length right so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we actually have a node to process you know for example if we were at this five and we called the dfs into its left subtree or its right subtree obviously those nodes are null we can't process them otherwise we're going to get some sort of exception thrown so we need to make sure that we're actually at a valid node so we're going to say if cur node then we want to do some processing here so we're going to say if the current nodes value minus one equals the previous value so basically if the difference between them is one and a positive one right because we don't want negative that would be the case that you know from two to three obviously two minus three is minus one we want a positive difference of one between them um, if we have that what we're going to do is we're going to say that the current length of our chain is going to be increased by one and now we need to update the global maximum if we have a new maximum so we're going to say self dot longest path it's going to be the maximum of whatever the current longest path is and our current length now what we want to do is we simply want to call into the left and right subtrees uh, with our DFS function. So we're going to say self dot DFS cur <coughs> dot uh, sorry yeah, cur node is I believe what we called it. Yeah, cur node dot left. And remember now we need to pass the parent value, which is our current nodes value. So we're going to say cur node dot val, and we're going to pass the current length of our chain. And we need to do the same thing for the right subtree. So we're going to say cur node dot right. We're going to pass current node.val again and current length. So notice here that we have this if statement. And basically what this means is that if there wasn't a difference of one, well, this two could still potentially be the start of our longest chain. So we want to basically reset our DFS and pretend like this could be potentially the, um, you know, the parent that we want to work with here. So we want to say self.dfs. So this is the case where we didn't have a difference of one. Uh, we basically want to you know this could be actually the start of the longest one uh, because we can choose any node to be basically be the start of our chain um, as long as it's the global maximum right so we're going to call into that node so we're going to say cur node dot left and as the parent value we're going to say cur node dot val and obviously the longest chain is going to be one cool so we're going to say self dot dfs cur node dot right cur node dot val and one so that is going to be what we do in the case where you know we don't have a longest chain well and that's all we need to do for dfs so let me just make sure i haven't made any syntax mistakes and int has no value oh dot val dot val of course this is why i check these things let's just run this make sure no more errors and why doesn't okay cool so i'll submit this and it works so what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm here well, this is going to be a top-down depth, depth first search. So obviously, DFSing through this tree uh, is going to take, in the worst case, big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the tree. Pretty standard uh, DFS here. Space complexity. You'll notice that um, the only variable we define is this longest path variable, which obviously is a constant space allocation. But because we're using a depth first search, which is recursive, we do have to take into account the stack frames that we may accumulate while doing the depth first search. So technically, our um, space complexity is going to be big O of n if we count uh, stack frames. Otherwise, it's going to be big O of 1. 
So that is how you solve this question. Again, pretty straightforward, just a regular depth first search, nothing crazy. You have definitely seen um, you know, this pattern before. And yeah, there you go. That's how you solve 298 long, uh, binary tree longest consecutive sequence. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.